Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. AITA for telling my husband that my doctor knows more than him and refusing to forgive him? My husband and I have been married for four years and together for six, and this is the first major argument we've ever had. I, 24F, am currently 33 weeks pregnant with his 31M baby. When I was 20 weeks pregnant, my doctor diagnosed me with placenta previa. For those who might not know, it means the placenta is covering the opening of my cervix. They told me it might move as the pregnancy progressed, but it hasn't. I'm scheduled for a C-section in just three weeks. At 20 weeks I was given some light restrictions, but by 30 weeks, the restrictions became more serious. No running, no lifting or climbing, no standing for more than three hours at a time, and most importantly, no sex and no vaginal exams. My doctor said we need to avoid anything that could potentially cause bleeding, which could lead to preterm birth. I've been following these restrictions for three weeks now, but it's been driving my husband absolutely crazy. Every single day he asks for sex. Every. Single. Day. I keep telling him I can't and remind him of the restrictions. I'm not even interested in sex, I'm exhausted, and my belly is so big. He's not happy with my answers. Finally he started arguing that doctors sometimes exaggerate things to benefit their careers and make more money. He claimed they push for C-sections. I tried to brush it off, but I know I have this condition, so I'm going to follow the rules. He didn't accept that, and we ended up having sex. A few hours later, I started bleeding heavily and panicked. I was crying in the bathroom, unsure of what to do. I called my doctor, who told me to come in immediately. During the car ride I was sobbing, fearing that I might need an emergency C-section for a baby who was only 33 weeks old. At the hospital, we quickly determined I wasn't in preterm labor, it was just bleeding. As long as it stopped, everything would be okay. It did stop, and I'm fine. However, while I was there, my doctor asked my husband to leave and began questioning me about whether I did anything I wasn't supposed to. She clarified that this wasn't meant to be accusatory, but was to understand the cause. I admitted that we had sex. She reviewed the restrictions again and gave me some information on domestic violence. She placed the information in my purse, which was deeply embarrassing. When we got back to the car, I broke down and yelled at my husband, telling him to never pressure me into doing something like that again and that my doctor knows better. He apologized, and I could see he meant it. However, I've still been holding a grudge, and he's been trying to make amends for days. He asked how long I'd make him apologize, and I told him at least until the baby is born. Am I the asshole for that? Update? Originally, I planned to tell my doctor and my sister-in-law, maybe my brother, but discussing this with him seemed daunting. I rescheduled my weekly appointment with my doctor for tomorrow. Some people suggested I could walk in but I didn't want to do that and then have to make excuses to my husband. The comments made me realize how serious the situation is, and I'm genuinely scared. I called my sister-in-law when she finished work, and we had a long conversation. As I mentioned in the comments, my sister-in-law and brother haven't liked my husband, especially my sister-in-law. She was incredibly supportive, and we talked a lot. I've come to admit that it wasn't just sex, it was rape. We discussed this in depth, she cleared up the confusion quickly, especially about the things my mom excused because she likes my husband. My sister-in-law was furious and told me to talk to my doctor while she would talk to my brother. She said she'd come down on the earliest flight, but my brother can't come yet because they have their own children. I was okay with that, and my appointment with my doctor is tomorrow. When my husband got home early, he saw I was upset. I had hoped to compose myself before he came home, but I ran out of time. Even though I didn't want to tell him anything, he was being unusually kind and concerned, which is rare but true. I ended up explaining the situation, even though I know it was a mistake. I'm used to sharing my problems with him, but it's hard to switch from seeing him as a loving husband to someone who has hurt me. I told him how he hurt me and how scared I am. He responded, what how? I explained that he forced me to have sex, physically restraining me, and telling me to calm down. He reacted with shock and anger, saying, Oh my god, don't say that that's a crime, do you realize you just accused me of marital rape? He pushed me away, and I started apologizing. He then dismissed me, acting condescending. I realized that, yes, what happened was indeed marital rapple. It led to another huge argument. He called me an idiot for using those terms, and I called him an abuser. He laughed and said I didn't understand what I was talking about. 
he insisted that sex with his wife couldn't be considered rape. When I tried to walk away, he grabbed my wrist. I pulled away, and he sarcastically said, Oh, I'm sorry, I might be guilty of battering a pregnant woman by your definitions. His condescending attitude pushed me to the brink, and I told him I didn't want to be around him. He said fine, he'd leave. I insisted I wanted to leave, so he told me to go get a hotel. So, here I am now, typing this. My sister-in-law is on her way, but I'm far from okay. He's called multiple times, but I haven't answered. I've never seen him this angry before. I'm worried about what he might do if I tell him I want to leave with the baby. He's the one who wanted a child, and I was persuaded. I'm terrified he won't let me take her easily. Every time I feel my baby kick, I just want to cry. I never thought my own baby would make me cry like this. But I am scared. I'm just now looking at the PDF everyone linked, and it's already making a lot of sense, thank you so much for that. A final update. I genuinely don't know how to express my gratitude for the support I've received. Thank you so much. On August 7, I posted an update mentioning having Braxton Hicks contractions for the first time. I was advised to go to the hospital. I wasn't planning to, but I'm so glad I did because when I arrived I was bleeding heavily. It turns out I had a placental abruption. On August 7 at 10, 37 p.m., my daughter was delivered via emergency C-section. She's just a little over 16 hours old as I post this, and I'm already dealing with an attorney and all that comes with it. She was born at just 33 weeks and 5 days. She's tiny but doing relatively well, according to the doctors. She's in the NICU and I'm still in the hospital. The care here is excellent, and although it's all very frightening and tough, seeing my daughter helps a lot. I'm okay, she's okay, and we'll be okay. The nurses are amazing, and the doctor said if all goes well, we'll be able to take her home in a few weeks. As for my situation, my sister-in-law arrived shortly after my daughter was born, and has been incredibly supportive. The attorney recommended allowing my husband visitation while she's in the NICU, which I agreed to. I don't worry about him harming our daughter while she's in the hospital. I've received lots of supportive messages from his co-workers and family so I suspect he's portraying that everything is fine and that we're together. He's seen our daughter several times today. I think he was in the hospital during the C-section, but I'm not entirely sure. He visited me in my room this morning while the nurses were helping me walk after the surgery. I was emotional enough to let him in. It's been difficult to hate him after everything. I allowed him to comfort me and cried with him. However, when he said, you wouldn't have had to do this alone if you hadn't acted that way, and tried to force a kiss, it reminded me why I'm doing this. I'm uncertain about my next steps. I initially wanted to have my daughter in my home state to stay with her and my sister-in-law and brother, but I doubt my husband will allow me to take her there. My attorney says I have options, and they are heavily in my favor, as I've gathered medical records of the rapes, including the one I mentioned and two others from past hospital visits, as well as documentation from my doctor stating my placental abruption was likely caused by trauma and stress for custody and other matters, but probably only here where we currently live. That's okay. Holding my baby, seeing her, and loving her has shifted my focus. I want to be safe, but more than anything, I want her to be safe. I will do everything I can to ensure she is in a safe environment. She's only 16 hours old, and she's all I think about now. I'm committed to protecting her and ensuring she's never in a situation like mine. I probably won't update again as I hope to spend more time with my daughter soon, but I wanted to express how much this whole post and the support I've received have impacted me. If anyone finds themselves in a similar situation, please don't be afraid to speak up. And to those who have survived such experiences, you are incredibly brave. Thank you so much for your support and encouragement.